Greetings in the name of the Most High. Um, welcome to the Zeph Report. And, you know, I trust that you're blessed and getting through it. Even if it's very difficult, I pray that you get through it, that the Lord leads you through it, and in a good way, in a way that uh, will make you say, Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for leading me through that. Well, yeah, on top of it, there's a tremendous amount of, like, you know, someone turned on the force field of oppression <laughs> this weekend, and I'm sorry. It, it's just, you know, it's across the board. It's everywhere. It's everyone has been beamed with the bummed out thing, which we tried to warn against a couple of podcasts ago, saying bummed out, no, but, you know, it, it would. I guess it was prophetic because it was coming. Now here it is. It just hit us all at once just so strong. And I don't know why that is. I, uh, you know, some of you can email me if you like and, and either confirm or deny or, you know, grapple or whatever you do to let me know how, what you think of what I just said. Uh, but it really has hit us. And um, it's invisible. I think it has something to do somehow, some weird way with the, with the Trump debate and the fervor, 24 million viewers, which is unheard of. And that's why I was saying that you know, God had chosen him to be this bull in the china shop. I, you know, people ask me, you know, is he going to win the presidency or whatever? I, I have no idea. I don't think so. I, I don't think so. That's my feeling. I don't think so. But that I don't, I don't want to be in my, I'll just leave it open. I don't know. I just know that he was, it's, it's an answer to prayer in a way because he's here at a time when what really needs to be shaken up is this GOP party of rhinos, it's just, it's, 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 if you think the Democrats are evil, they're nothing compared to the GOP, because they're the secret establishment behind the scenes that just decided to do a TKO punch to Trump, and got the whole Fox News staff to corrupt themselves, and lie, and go right for the jugular. Clinton said they were going to put him out of his misery, and clean it up before the debates, clearing the way for his wife. Now I know what he meant, his buddies at Fox. Conservative, <laughs> and then um, you know the street fight, and then the aftermath, the picking on the Megyn Kelly. I mean, I agree that you know, I, I look, I can't advise Trump what to do or not do. He's gonna, he's gonna just be honest and speak what he thinks. And they all picked up on this blood comment, which he was really just meaning that Megyn Kelly and Chris Wallace both. He said blood the eyes of Chris Wallace that, that they were angry and they were coming after him. And that's the main gist of it. But they tried to make it into, like, de denigration of women. And then, unfortunately, this Carly Fiorina jumps on and sides with, I, I'm with Megan. And it's just the most disgusting eighth grade. Um, it, it makes you want to never talk to these people again. Just leave this country and leave everyone and just say to hell with it. Or maybe just put a gun to my head and blow my brains out just to get away from these assholes. Whew, sorry. Uh, I was in a bad mood the other day. I guess I still am. Funny, I did a podcast, Let's Not Be Bubbed Out, and I've been like, um, well, this is artificial. This is like someone put a beam weapon on me and just stuck me down. Don't like it. Anyway, it's a somber day in August. And, uh, you know, it's better to be down, I guess, in a way, and disappointed rather than up and pompous and cocky and you know, arrogant and ridiculous. It's probably better to be down and, you know, maybe semi-hopeful and kind of cautious and a little bit jaded and kind of, you know, guarded. And, and uh, Although I'd like to be a pure heart again and just be elated about things. But I've, after I've seen the behavior on Twitter, I did spend my time tweeting and getting involved in, in what, what I felt the Lord was leading me to do, which was kind of, get into it, just take a look at what was going on, and I, I can't, I actually can't take it. I uh, feel like I really can't look that closely. I had been a supporter of Carly Fiorita because of the of things she said. I still like the things she says. I don't like what she did with the, the Megyn Kelly, you know. I said with Megyn that evil Donald Trump, that's beneath a candidate for, as far as I'm concerned, that just shows me something about, you know, siding with the establishment, no matter what they want, 
not having the real integrity. And I, you know, I kind of like lost interest in her at, at that point. Um, she lost before. She's been fired. She lost to Barbara Boxer. You know what I mean? She's not really a winner. It's just that I saw something, you know, and I thought that if there was going to be a woman president, maybe this could be an alternative. But I really don't hear anything new now, and I, you know, I'm I'm not really going to be getting to. I don't recommend whether you vote or not, by the way, either. I am. I'm said God's not separate from things, but you do as you're led by the Lord. I'm not telling you. Well, so therefore you have to get involved in politics or the military or you know, some or the water uh, problem in California, or whatever it is, I'm saying it's not separate from all these problems and these issues we have upon the earth as humans. Okay, that's my main thing. If you want to vote or don't vote, I, I, I could care less. At this point, I'm, um, the whole life here is surreal to me, so I don't know how to advise you because I don't think the most solid reality in my mind is this earth. Okay, to me it's not that, but... I'm also seeing some things that are very interesting. And uh first post debate. No, I saw that and I and I understand and and uh and what are you saying about that? Trump is still in the lead. Well, yeah, and 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 that's supernatural. It is. It's it's completely supernatural. God is dealing with this Trump. I never saw anyone get a full head shot like he got, maybe 3 of them. And, you know, it's like it's like being punched as hard as Muhammad Ali could have punched Joe Frazier right in the smacker, you know, three times in a row with the hardest punch he's got. And um, and the guy just stands there like nothing happened. <laughs> you know, where they all piled on. I mean, you know, the whole Republic, it's just beautiful. And the, I say, Lord, thank you for giving me that. Thank you for showing me that. Um, thank you for choosing him to be, you chose the bull of the China shop, who will say anything, uh, to show the hypocrisy, the utter hypocrisy of these people, how they all went running to, to back up whatever Fox News wants rather than their integrity. And every single one of them calls themselves a Christian. Well, not from where I come from, they're not. No, especially Mike Huckabee, who is, who is just the, probably the biggest hypocrite that I've ever seen in my life. And I'm and I'm just absolutely so thoroughly disgusted. I can't stand it. I, I, I go, Donald, shake it up, and they go. Well, these these people are turning people away from the GOP. You think anyone cares about someone like Jeb Bush, the most boring person on the planet, or anybody cares about the GOP as it is right now? Anyway, no, they already left in droves. It was only because the Donald showed up that they had twenty four million, where they usually have two and a half million, maybe three. If it's a record, you know, usually that's during the actual presidential debate right toward the end there. But they should have had around two to two and a half million views, uh, visit, uh, viewers. Fox on the debate had 24 million. It's not even calculable as a record. It's so far beyond, 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 beyond any, anything possible, you understand. It's not possible, 24 million. Not possible. And, of course, then the war against Donald Trump went crazy on Twitter, and he just hung in there. And some of the people that you might think, you know, are piling on, you've got James Woods, number one pile on her, Brad Thor, uh, Dana Lash, if you're, if, you know, I, I can't stand Glenn Beck, but if you were a Glenn Beck fan, she works for Glenn Beck. I don't like the fact he lies about 9-11, and then it tells you if you don't join him in his silly mind control that uh, you're banned. And I can't deal with juveniles like that. Can you? Absolutely not. He's, he's totally under some sort of mind control. I set him aside a long time ago. And, uh, you know, it was really, it's not what you think of me, Mr. Glenn Beck. It's what I think of you in my life. And, and what I think of you is you suck. You lie. So... And then they bring God into it, right? Like he's so devout. And that just that just breaks my heart, you know. Nobody in their right mind could look at the the the, the just I don't, like I said with nine eleven. I didn't look at all the forensic evidence. I didn't need to. All I needed to do was see that we have two planes, but we have three buildings and fourth of Pentagon, which doesn't have any plane debris. So when I look at that, I simply say what is. And then I'm told that I'm insane, I'm wearing a tinfoil hat. When I mention what the news told me, when I feed it back, 
point by point, I get attacked for saying what they told me. This country, that's right, the United States of mind control, insanity, uh, and perversion, and suffering, and pain, and, 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 and awfulness, and tawdriness. And then that's what Obama has brought us. That's, that's a friend uh, just tells me that... Uh, you know, somebody and uh, and uh, you know they they were working out, and this gal was leaving the gym or whatever, and uh, she gets robbed at gunpoint by possibly an illegal alien, and it's like, yeah, the murder rate's up thirty percent thanks to Obama. Do you do anything? No, you don't do anything. I don't do anything. We don't do anything. We just sit here and we just say, please don't hurt us further than you already have. Please don't hit me in the head with that rock. Please don't send that illegal alien to kill me. Please. Oh, you know, it's so insane that you're living in hell in the United States. You know, this is, oh, no, it's the greatest country with the greatest. Um, friends of mine can't go outside because, they, because the, the danger of being gunned down is too much. I hope you wake up to understand that it's not Disneyland. You still have a veneer, but this Obama guy, he's made it complete hell. In terms of the uh, what, what what's happened with immigration, the economy, the world, wars, pain, suffering, pain, suffering, pain, suffering, mm, pain, suffering beyond all imagination, pain, suffering, with the hope of ramping up even more. You see, I believe that this man doesn't want to punish us for being Americans. I think he he wants to punish us for for being born. For being human, all of us, black, white, it doesn't matter now. He's the biggest enemy of the blacks that that's ever been, and they just take it. You know, they just take it. More unemployment, more immigration, which causes more black unemployment, more black on black crime. You know, uh, uh, not doing anything about it except wanting to confiscate, using the incidents to want to confiscate guns. I mean, that's that's about it. Using the blacks to get his way. You black people, if you're, listening, if you're still listening to me, if you haven't been turned off because I may not share the same skin color as you, uh, my heart goes out. I am so sorry that all this is happening. I, I'm one of the few people I get, the few, the very few. I've been on Twitter uh, in the fight, and I've been around all the, you know, the famous pundits and all the, you know, all the in-betweens and everyone, left, right, you name it. And I can tell you, you and I out there, we are the very few I mean, we're the very few. We're superlative in this society. We are the very best of the best. We are the very most knowledgeable of the knowledgeable. The people out there, the pros and all that, they don't have a clue. They just, all they know is what side their bread is buttered on, and they go run that way. Like if it's Megyn Kelly, you know, this uh, Carly Fiorina, she wanted to, she won the debate and got all this attention. She goes and shoots her mouth off. She goes and runs and stands next to Megan because that's who's going to give her airtime in the future. That's why. It's, it's just like, oh, what I went through in the playground, oh, my God, it's the same thing. So, no, there's no hope for the country unless God intervenes. And, you know, fortunately he is. He gave you Donald Trump. And I think what a great gift that was. So I don't know if he goes all the way. I'll just clarify where I'm at today on it. I don't know. I've met other people that were very confident. The reason I call you superlative is because you're awake when most of the world around you, the whole Twitterverse is, un, is not awake at all. So if you're waiting for people to wake up, don't hold your breath. They're not awake. Pundits, Fox News people, contributors, uh, news people, all the news outlets, um, politicos, uh, you name it, they're not awake. Do you understand that? They don't understand. They don't know anything about it. They still think we're living in some kind of solid you know, universe here. They don't see the pliability of it all. They don't even understand why Donald Trump exists. Um, they, don't, they don't get what, what, what the whole you know, issue is here on Earth or what the purpose of your being born is. They don't know anything like that. They don't know anything about anything about anything. They just slam. You had the authors like Brad Thor, the novelist, saying... Shame on you if you stand with Trump. It's like after this little fight, this row between this insignificant row, because a guy, 
you know, says something that, you know, is complaining about the, the host of gunning. They were gunning for him. They set up questions to gun for him. He, he said they're gunning for me. They got blood coming out of their eyes. The next thing you know, they're, 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 they're excommunicating him. They're looking for any excuse to get rid of him, don't you see? And while, if, you, if you feel inclined, throw a prayer his way. I believe that God is in this. But I, I'm not saying that anyone else has to be involved. He just showed me, no, I can't go back. I feel dirty. I feel dirty. I feel I've, I feel I've been dirtied. I'm very witty with Twitter. I'm very good at the one-liners when I put my mind to it and I get them flow, you know. But I have music to do. I have things to do. i got the studio to work on. I'm coming up with a new concept on how to present music that will, um, I think, show people the way um, and, uh, you know, realize that this dinosaur antiquated system of presenting music is dead. And uh, <clears throat> unless you just want a lot of heartache, good, good. Don't don't present your music the way you're doing it. I'll have more on that later. It's, uh, that's all I can say now. But I've I absolutely uh, well I can't speak for anyone else. I'm just going into my own sound thing, and I'm going to give myself a few years to develop it. But I'm uh, you'll see results right away. I um, am absolutely going to integrate the podcast and the uh, and music and everything else. But there'll still be this little podcast that we have these individual because to me this is also part of it but um as far as sound and music and all that it all it, it's all going to be integrated in the future i just have to you know this this is kind of like a this i won't do these low fidelity podcasts all the time any, anymore i will be in the other one but like i say it'll be integrated there'll be a, it's going to be a much more of a much more variety when you listen to a podcast here there's going to be a lot more to consider today let's just say i'm going to keep this short because I did say it called my last one the Donald Chosen, so this one is, um, and I apologize for the low fidelity of the vocal. You need my voice because my voice actually has a resonance in it. That's a gift. It's a. It's not me doing it. It's just. It's. It's also part of aging, but it's a. It's a resonance that causes healing. <laughs> I know it's weird. I have reports from all over the world on that, so it's. It's not a lie. It. It. You know. It's. It's. It's bizarre. Okay. It's like I have a. I've got a certain resonance in my voice that's a certain frequency that heals people. I've got a mosquito after me. Get away from me. All right. So this whole thing with Donald Trump being the bull in the China shop, a lot of prayer has gone into, you know, what do we do to fix our country? What do we do to have our children live? What do we do to not all be killed tomorrow? How, how many of you think you're going to live for another five years? That you're going to survive this. I mean, you've you've thought about your own mortality during this, haven't you? I mean, if things get out of control and riots and you know the thing in California and if there are water riots and you know it's it's just a it's a terrible terrible time. I'm, you know, I, that's why I did the bummed out thing. I did bummed out, and I've been I I feel like I'm not bummed out fundamentally. I'm a happy person. I really am. I didn't used to be happy. You you've seen me when I wasn't happy. But I kind of healed in front of you online, and I probably gave you hope that you could heal too, because I was still delayed, you know? When I say delayed, it means that it's like being shell-shocked. When, you're, when, you're, um, when you have traumas and hurts, you know what I mean, and, you're, and they were from a long time ago, but you just now be able to look at them, and, and that you're just now hurting from them, and it's a delay of several years, or, or many years, or just a year, but there's a delay and you being able to deal with it. Or someone hurt you three months ago and then you couldn't... Well, they didn't hurt you. I mean, you, 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 you know, people can do what they did to me that traumatized me before. And they could try to do it now. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> See what I mean? It was because I wasn't healed. And so something happened and then, then, then there's a month or two delay. It used to be there were years of a delay. And then all of a sudden then I integrated completely into no delay. And when that happened, these bullies went away. Oh, they don't show their face around me. Are you kidding? <laughs> you know how pathetic these people are? You realize that they're totally unhealed, right? They need to hook up a circuit with someone that's got a, a delay thing going, you know, a trauma thing. They can't have a normal relation. It scares them. They go run and hide. You know, your bullies are, 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 are you know, they're bullies for a reason because they, they are for afraid. But anyway, well, I had some of that, and you know that 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 all kind of went away, and um, and then I got happy. 
meaning, you know, I, I, you know, most of the time, just if left alone, relatively content, not giddy, like jumping around, but just a sense of well-being and a sense of being whole. But I'm still, there's things I do that I don't want to do. There's sins, there's things I, I hate about myself that, you know, I work on, but it's the normal stuff. It's not, it's not, you know what I mean? It's the normal fallen condition. It's not the extra stuff from which, which I think in my family, it was like, it was sins of the father's visit, visit upon the sons. I'm a, and I believe that the, my brother and I sort of paid for what our elders did. And then I, I survived it. I don't know how I did, but you saw me. You, you were there. So because of that, I realized how fat powerful the podcast is. Podcasting in general, you know, and then I realized, oh, gosh, you see, this is the thing they don't want us to do is have this kind of communication, this kind of hum humanity communication. And because it heals us. And then we, we realize how much in common we have. And then there's so many so many things we want to do in the future. So I'm finding some ways of using this podcast, which is more vital now than ever in terms of the media. Who knew? It was, again, God was in that podcast. The concept of the podcast, God was in it. More so than, than broadcast, because live, live streaming, it's like you have to be there a certain time, right? Not so with the podcast. It's more powerful than that. And I really appreciate it. No, no Z and Frankie today. I'm sorry about that. I just, um, last few days have been really drained. And I've, I've got I've a pile of work to do in the studio. And, you know, I'm not that I'm avoiding it, but I'm, uh, I think you know how it is. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, it's not easy creating a new way of doing things. And it's just I'm having trouble adjusting to having to make some changes, you know, in methodology, changes in presentation, changes in things. Um, you know, we've, we, we've talked about, uh, you know, I think I have found a way to present, like I say, the music and I'll be informing other artists and people out there. I know you're interested, but there, I'm not, nothing I say is going to mean anything new. It's just that I'm, I'm reintegrating things a different way because I realize that, you know, the, the idea of, see, it's an antiquated idea that you do a song and then present it like a record, you know, like put it on a SoundCloud. No one's going to listen to you. And the reason they don't listen, it's not their fault that they don't listen. It's just that they, it's too much to get their mind around. It's too much work to listen. It, you have to accept a new sound, a new piece of music, something, you know, what, it, unless they know you and they're a fan and they're kind of wanting to see what you're up to. Other than that, they're not going to listen. And they shouldn't, actually, because you're giving them, you the artist, are not giving them any reason to listen. And that's how I started rethinking this whole thing, just because I had put some tracks on YouTube and I had, put them on the podcast and I put them on the SoundCloud and whatnot. And they do good on the podcasting. I mean, people hear them kind of in the stream of the podcast, which is a good place to put them, probably the best place. But the other places, no. And the whole, everyone told me the YouTube thing was the way to go. No, not really. It's just like SoundCloud with moving pictures it does the same thing. It's no, it's no different. Um, you know, I kind of had fun messing around with video, but if I'm going to do future videos, I, I really need to have... Um, the means of production and that no one's going to offer me that and I don't expect them to and there's no monetary um, future in it right now so I'm, you know so there so there is no reason for them to uh, let me have you know million dollar uh, cameras and whatnot so I'm not going to pursue it because I you know the, the, the fact is I, I just have a high quality standard and I need, you know, I need to have sets and lights and things like that. Just not a big deal, not a huge, not the best, but just the basics of production. And if I can't have that, then then there's no point. Yeah, well, it's fun, you know, messing around with some amateur stuff. But it, it I think it denigrates the music, and it, 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 it it's, it's just the music is better than that. Is my point. It's better than what I can do with video, and so it's a lot better. In fact, the music's real professional, and video isn't. So. And it, it can't be because I don't have the means of production. It could be if I have the means of production, but I, it can't be because I don't have the means of production and editors. And I don't mind editing myself, but it's like I need to have, you know, storyboards and, and uh, pre-production planning and uh, budgeting and scheduling and, you know, first AD and, and uh, you know, a line producer and that kind of thing. Just to, even if it's only a week shoot, just to get it done. And uh, that was a decision I made just because I, it's the right decision because I take what I do very seriously. 
and you know, meaning I want to have the best. That's why we have the studio. We have the studio is, is an A class studio, you know. And I'm I'm not gonna just fritter around with video. Uh, it was just for friends and stuff, you know. And and you know, we got some some people from the podcast listening, and we got people listening to it. I put the links on you know sites where there's you know 70 million views right so you have traffic so they click it on for five seconds we get the credit for the play but then they, there's no they, then they click it off and there's no follow through it's like well that's a waste of my time so it, it turns out to be the same thing as soundcloud and everything else so uh it's like i then i realized it's a light belt boom it's like we're not going about this thing right you know and i had you know i have had people promoting it in the past and people you know trying to help and and it's just, it's just, you know, it's just dead. You know, it's, it's just dead. Someone told me that most of SoundCloud is run by robots, where they have, where you see a lot of plays, you see the, the comments all the way across, where there's no, no room. Record companies will do that, and they have robots that actually do all the plays and put the comments in. And they're robots. They're bots. And they, they do all that to, to, create, you know, because they, they're in a commercial thing and they're trying to make money, you know, with their music. Uh, so, I mean, what's wrong with that paradigm is that, again, when you, the artist, puts a, a, a song out there, there's no reason for anyone to listen to it. And until there is a reason... They're not going to listen. You can't keep doing the same thing over and over expecting a different result. Used to be, when I started, we could sell, I made several thousand dollars per track of instrumental music, of just just putting together loops and samples and stuff. And I make several thousand dollars a track. You know, not every track, but, you know, like at least three grand. Yeah, oh yeah, sell the MP3. But today, it does, that doesn't happen that way. And people aren't interested because... The music revolution is spread everywhere, so every other person's a musician. They all have tracks, right? You have to, yeah. So, I want to give you a reason, you know, and and reasons. And the only way to do that is you have to, you know, there has to be. It just has to be bigger than you can't just put a song out there anonymously, walk away and expect anyone to listen. They're not going to. If they know you, they will. I mean, you'll, you'll get your friends and stuff. I'm not saying you won't get because they're interested in your life and, and all that. And Yeah, but it's, there has to be a whole new way of thinking about the podcast as well. I have to revolutionize this whole thing, and I already have an idea on how to do it. And so I'm, I'm stoked about it. But funny, I just have no energy this weekend to get up and get going and start pursuing some of that because I, I've, I've been knocked down, folks, by some kind of a beam weapon. I don't even know. what It's, it's the bummed out weapon. I just did the thing on being bummed out. And then the bummed out beam comes in and guess what? Bummed out? No. Bummed out? Yes. It knocked me down. <laughs> I'm not bummed out, though, ultimately. My soul is not bummed out. You know what I mean? But I feel like, wow, oppression. And it all swirls around this Donald Trump debate event and this f fighting with this Megyn Kelly, who's some kind of a, you know, a super bitch, if nothing else. I feel sorry for her, for her husband. My God, if he still has a pair, I doubt he does. But if he still has a pair, geez, what a, what a horrible thing. To, a good thing she's gone all day. I, I can't imagine. When, you know, maybe he has a whole secret life going by now. Uh, would, it would not be beyond the realm of, of making sense for him to do that. Uh, but here he is raising these kids, and I'm, now I'm concerned that her kids will commit suicide. And I'm just, right, because when you have these really, you know, mean, aggressive women for a mother, uh, <laughs> hello? <laughs> uh, kids tend to be upset, you know. And, um, I, I, you know, I, I'm, those are cheap shots. I should just uh, back off. I'll, I, I would strike that from, I'm going to publish this podcast anyway because I have to. I'm just, I'm just angry, you know. I'm just disappointed and, and I feel dirty from having been out there and, and doing my thing. But I'm very good at tweeting. I didn't realize that. I have a real, uh, I was a writer. I was always literary, you know. I wasn't just a meat and potatoes writer. I always took it to that literary level because I started as a poet, right? So poets are little literary than, than more prose writing. But I didn't realize I had a talent to break it down to one sentence. You know, I, I got into a rhythm of it. I'm going, yeah, pretty, there. I had tons of retweet, retweets, tons of, it, it, give me a week with this. 
And I'd, I'd, I'd tear up the whole thing. Give, they'd be, give me a podcast based on that. And I could just have my music as bumper music. No, I won't. Of course I won't do that. You know, I'm going to go the road of a you know, different drummer. Just like Donald Trump. He he's, he's, he's dances to the beat of a different drummer. And so do I. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm not looking for... Um, to make a go of it. I, I find that to be hypocritical just at the get-go, even that proposition. You know, I, I intend to be... Uh, well, I don't know. I guess one has to be true to oneself. And, you know, I do plenty to get in the way of that. And I, like I say, I stumble and fall and make mistakes and and all that. And, and uh, I'm aware of it. And, you know, it makes me like the tortoise rather than the hare. But... Uh, but that's okay, I'm not in a hurry. This bummed out thing, though, along with the debate, since that time and then, you know, looking, being in the Twitterverse and seeing, you know, the seeing how ignorant the people are, right, that are supposed to be the brightest and best of our society. Let me tell you something. You people are ten times smarter than they are. And ten times more awake, you know, it'd be, you're awake and they're not, is really the point. You congratulate yourselves, number one, because you're at the top of the class. And they're not. They're somewhere in the middle. You're at the top. And then God help the ones below that. But you're somewhere at the very top of the society. And, um, and that's why you have the blowback against you, because, you know... The, the powers, that they don't want you to see behind the matrix, you know, behind the curtain to see just exactly how this thing's running, which is supernatural. It's got, Donald Trump is supernatural. Was he God working? Watch the way he works with Donald Trump. It's supernatural. It's, it's the most, I've never seen a human being take the kind of um, political piling on that he took, that he's taking right now today. And he remains at, I, I get, you know, 20 Four twenty-five percent, something like that. I'm not sure exactly. Um, and the next one down is thirteen percent. Even after all that, I mean, sure, it's off a few percentage points. But and they say now, watch, he'll 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 crash and burn. They're all calling him crash and burn for the umpteen million time. These people are absolutely um, horrifying. Uh, it's horrifying. Yeah, you, I, I wouldn't think that this civilization could go five minutes without self-destructing with these people. And they're working for ABC News, and they're working for Fox News, they're working for CNN. I can't believe it. And, you know, in, in the Twitterverse, you, you know, you can interact with them. They try not to interact with you, but if you say something, the way that you get them to interact with you, if you say something that just is witty enough and it pricks them the wrong way, they'll, they'll, they, might, they might make a reaction. Otherwise, they're very smug. They sit there and make their statement, and all the other little people make their commentary. And it's, that's, that's also sick. As sick as could be. That's why I feel uh, sullied. I feel dirty. I feel dirty like watching porn, right, for, for, for three hours rather than, you know, being productive and getting something done. It's like the people in the work for the government. They watch porn all day long. Of course, they feel good about themselves after watching porn all day long because they feel they game the system, right? So they feel they watch porn all day long, then they go home, and they're just having a gay old time. But, right, watching porn, to me, is, is a way to feel dirty and to feel unproductive and to feel like you're, you're just getting yourself in deeper, being addicted to something that uh, you might have to struggle to get away from. I mean, it's a, it's a hard thing, especially for men who fantasize and, you know, play with themselves and all this. And if they get, you know, especially if they feel bad, they look for escapes. So men more than women. Ah, well, you know what? Now it's a toss-up today between men and women. I don't want to make a, I actually, I don't know about women. I just know that there's a dirty feeling and, I, and it, you know, if you want to get over it, you, you need to give it to the Lord. You need to really bring the Lord in on this. I told you that no, he's not separate. It's just, Lord, I'm sorry. I got this horrible thing. I just want to give it to you, Lord. Please heal me from this in Jesus name. Amen. And uh, you can apply that to just about anything, but sex addiction, that's one of those things that's, that's a tough one. The flesh wants to bind us into an addiction, into a problem, into a dependency, into a, a road to hell. And, and now that's what the Twitterverse feels like to me. I know there's people addicted to being online. To, to the, twi the Twitter thing's very addictive. Especially for these journalists and these people. That This whole hierarchy that's there. It's the sickest uh, thing you've ever seen in your life. Okay? And it's, it's actually worse than porn. 
because it's more even more addictive. I've had to back off of it, but I, I went there because, you know, since the debates, I was kind of, you know, you know, they were all piling on and this guy, I mean, just trying to kill this guy. Uh... They keep reading, re retweeting my tweet, which I said uh, to uh, Donald Trump. Uh, they don't want rhinos, the people out there. Too many of them now. And what do the people get? Nada. You know, and uh, that's a very simple statement. But it's been retweeted a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of times, you know, in the context of the fight that it was in. Anyway, I was just, uh, what I saw was that you'd think, you know, on the Trump feed that, you know, which is everything Trump on the Twitterverse. Basically, what I saw there was that he was um, doing pretty well, considering that they were all piling on trying to, and they're all saying he was dead already. They proclaimed him dead after the comments about McCain, remember, and now they proclaimed him dead. But he, he has been knocked down in the polls. Um, but then again, <laughs> that's, that's good, 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 good. It's better to kind of ease him down. But I... I'm not here to defend him on, on to presidency. I, I just don't know that I, I... I don't know what I'm looking at. I, I, I have to say that I believe God chose him to create chaos, to bring healing by just... What he's done is he's unmasked all the hypocrites. He's unmasked all of Fox News. He won't even go on Fox News now. They're all hypocrites, and he's put... The, the whole world sees it. This is what the Lord has done. This is something I've never seen. It's too far beyond supernatural. It's beyond my ability to even comprehend the kind of thing that I'm seeing going on. I know no one else shares it with me, but I know what I'm seeing. I'm seeing something that I just can't explain, and he's being used as a part of it, but it's this upheaval that's going to that's gonna hit the Democrat Party as well because they're also a bunch of hypocrites in the same way, and, that's, and people are trying... They tried to vote a Congress and a Senate in that would that would you know try to get some sense in, and the the people were completely ignored. So now, in comes the bull in the china shop, you know, and uh, someone said, "You mess with the bull, you're going to get the horns, honey or sweetheart. You mess with the bull, you get the horns, sweetheart." That's right. They just call him the bull now. They don't call him the bull in the china shop. They call him the bull. It's, 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 you just, I don't want to like it too much. I don't want to see the guy get hurt. You mess with the bull, you get the horns, Trish said. You mess with the bull, you get the horns. <laughs> he likes the term bull in the china shop. I've never seen anything like, this guy has taken, I mean, and you want to know the, some of the biggest hypocrites, though, of all? The Christian conservatives are the worst of the worst. Mike Huckabee, what a pathetic, horrible little man he is. Oh, he's a big man, but he's a little man, really. Um, you know, uh, these are people that are sucking up to Megyn Kelly, and it's sickening watching them suck up to Rupert Murdoch. It's sickening. You know, Rupert Murdoch, is, is the, the thing he donates to the most is the Clintons. Do you kind of see where I'm going with this? You understand what I'm saying? It's the Fox News is involved in Clintonville, okay? And a lot of what you're seeing now, people say, well, how, how about Donald? He was involved with the Clintons, and, well, not much. I mean, I think I gave Carly Fiorina a good donation at one point when she was nowhere with this campaign, where she was going to get bankrupt. And I think he might have given, he doesn't give that much. People make too big a deal out of that. But, but, but Murdoch, he does give a lot. And the thing is, is that uh, Hillary Clinton, okay, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just, I'll, let me just lay it out for you. Bill Clinton said he was going to take Donald Trump out. And, and obviously he was going to use his buddy Rupert Murdoch at Fox News to do that very thing. They got together with Brett Baer and the rest of the crew, and they plotted, you know, questions that would take Trump out and insults, figuring he might be thin-skinned and he re would react. And, you know, you go after him, he goes after you. He's very New York, Okay. So very, very, you know, he's not, I don't think he's in the mafia, but he's very mafia, <laughs> you know. I, I don't know anything about the mafia, I don't want to know. I Believe me, I don't want to know. Okay, so, but he's very much reminds me, you know, the Don, right? You know, it's, it's that kind of guy. All right, so, you know, and uh, he and Bill O'Reilly, I think they do get along. But, I mean, in, basically, they, they, they tried to take him out. The, the establishment, 
which can, includes Rupert Murdoch and Bill Clinton. They're all in the same club. So it's not left or right at that level. It's just basically they're all friends, okay? So the idea was here to take out, uh, you know, the Donald. And um, they all conspired to do it. They conspired. And then they then they went nuts with, I stand with Megan. So we started seeing the hypocrites. The Carly Fiorina turned into a hypocrite. Mike Huckabee. Uh, we saw them all lining up with Megan Kelly. Brad Thor, the novelist. Uh, James Woods, you know, the actor who you thought was so conservative. D think again, he's not. And these are basically establishment people, okay? You know, it's, James Woods is no maverick, all right? He's he's basically, you know, I, I, I can't, I, I just, I'm, they're all in the club anyway. There is a club there too. And they're all supporting it and backing it. Laura Ingram. You want to take that cross off her neck and throw it where the sun don't shine. You, you do, you do, when you see her tweets, you sure, sure feel that way. Mike Huckabee, uh, smoochy, smoochy, kissing the ass of Megyn Kelly. Like, please don't put me in the same group of those people. I want, I like my relationship with Fox News. That's right. But what about integrity, uh, Mr. Governor? What about integrity? What about, what about the Lord? What about, you know, not lying? And, um, you know, and the rest, and I saw all this, and I saw them all getting demasked, I suppose. And I saw that it was Donald Trump demasking them because they, he blinded them. And then they, they showed their true colors, and I could see it. You know, I forgive, you know, Carly and the rest of her. I forgive myself for back here. It's okay that I backed her. You know, she's got good ideas, like kind of Reagan esque ideas, I suppose, for the country, and it would be. You know, she got 8%. Uh, her her poll, she was at 1%. Now she's at 8%. That's not, maybe she'll go higher than that. I don't know. I, I saw her with uh, Jake Tapper on, you know, I've, I've, been, I've been in the political world, you know, for, for a few days now. Well, I, I don't know why the Lord has me here. I mean, I, I don't think I'm here on my own because I, I don't think I could stand it on my own. You know, and I've gone back even when I feel bad. I, I, I'm kind of out of it now. I hope I don't ever have to go back there again, but... Maybe this is to give me material to write about musically or something. I don't know. But, I mean, it's really hard to have your head up and have a good, and feel positive about humanity after, after immersing myself in that cesspool, let me tell you. And, you know, and like I said, I was good at it. That's what's a scary thing. And I, I could see, like, you know, four hours goes by like this. I could see just... You know, blogging and doing that, a lot of people do, and they just become absorbed, obsessed, and, 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 and addicted to it. Yeah, and the political game, and Washington, D.C., and whatever is happening. What I saw happening was the Donald Trump being used to demask all these people that put themselves out there as conservative Christians, specifically. Now, if the same thing happens in the church bowl in the China shop, I would love it. If the same thing happens with the DNC, I would love it. If it happens in this country, it causes, you know, the people, you know, the, now the average people out there, the people who really are Christians and they really are conservatives, meaning, you know, they support the Constitution, the Bible, prayer in school. That's conservative today. I support all those things. And I don't support prayerlessness or, or ban on prayer. I, that's liberal. Uh, it should liberals should be including prayer. I don't, you know, the terms are so bizarre. I don't understand anymore. But I can tell you this. I believe Lord's up to something here in this country. I mean, so many people are praying. You know, we had such a good. Please protect us, Lord, from 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 these people that are in the positions of leadership and you know, corporate fascism and things like, please protect the people, Lord. I mean, this is, these are like cancers. Please protect us from this cancer. And the people are so outraged. The reason I believe that Donald Trump's numbers don't sink. I mean, he's at 23%, and some people say, well, he was at 46%, and now he's cut down to 23%. Um, you have to understand something. That those numbers, he... After the debate, he was never supposed to stay at 46%. It's just that he was the loudest before then. Now other people have had a chance to come forward. 24 million people saw them. So the numbers are going to be more, more homogenous. It doesn't mean he's failing. It just means they're adjusting to having more exposure. So there's more support for different candidates because people want choice, and they should have choice. So there's a lot of good choices there, I guess. Well, actually there aren't. 
I've almost fooled myself again and lied to myself. Actually, there aren't. <laughs> there aren't choices. <laughs> aren't you glad I know how to speak with you? Don't I make you feel better on this horrifying day? Well, those of you in the kind of spiritual vein I'm in, you know this is a horrifying day. I mean, I, I don't need a... What did Bob Dylan say? You don't need a weather band to know which way the wind blows. I certainly don't. I see what's coming down. And it's just... Because you still have this sort of New World Order crowd that wants to do this whole, you know, complete torture and destruction of humanity uh, during this time period, right? Of just behind the scenes. And they're giving us this illusion of having a political debate when really the seething wolves are right there about to get us. Right? And so you sit there going, how can I get through this? You, you feel it, don't you? You feel it, right? You feel it. Oh, I know you do. Thank, thank you, Lord, for getting us through. So I'm not bummed out, and you can hear it in my voice, I'm not bummed out, because I've never really bummed out. I'm just, I'm just sometimes tired, and I, and I need, you know, I wish I just, in a sense, I had the, my youth, but, you know, I probably would, you know, run and gun it too much and, and you know, wreck it, so... I wish I was a light being. That's just I could do all these things like like I could do fifteen things at once, and I don't need any sleep. Oh, and I'm completely fresh every every minute. I'm ready to go, go, go. So he said, I like like accomplishing things, and I and I also like to sit there and just buzz, go, zzz, and not move, and not do anything, and just be. Isn't that nice? Just be. There's no problem. No one's coming to get you. You have all the time in the world. You're an eternal being. And just be with the Lord. Experience breathing in and breathing out. Shut your eyes. Everything is just perfect right now. So thank you for indulging me for that moment to get centered here. Um, it's, it's, I believe the crisis is blowing over right now. And uh, I do believe that, uh, you know, they're, they're saying that he's dead, that the, the wind, the, the air is going out of the balloon at a rapid rate. It'll be gone by next week. And if it is, folks... Um, I mean, I don't know what to tell you from here. I believe I see that God, I, here, here's how I revise what I've, this is where I'm at today. And it's kind of a revision. Of, I think the Lord's chosen this man to do this incredible thing that's happening. And I, but I don't know if it goes all the way or if it gets petered out or if he crashes and burns. If he does, the Lord has still chosen him for this, this exposure of the hypocrisy, this demasking. But I still feel the people are mad out there and they don't want these candidates, but they like him. So I don't think he goes to zero like everyone wants, but you know they'll do anything. They're salivating to get rid of him. They're, 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 I've seen the ravenous wolves, and a lot of them are people you used to look up to, or still do, and they want him out. And they want him down, and Clinton promised, eh, he'll be no problem brushing him aside. You, you could tell how sinister that statement was, like he was... It's no problem getting rid of a hothead like Donald Trump. It's no problem, you know, get rid of him. You know, and so that was the method of getting rid of him, Fox News. Isn't that a hypocrite? Isn't that awful? Well, I turned off Fox News here, and I turned off Carly Fiorina, and I, you know, basically that, is there anybody else? There was Ted Cruz that I, and Rand Paul. I sort of like him, but... It's she's scratched off and uh, and uh, and Donald Trump. I, I I guess you know I I had hoped that Donald Trump and Carly Fiorina would have made up and been friends and and maybe it could have been president and vice. I don't know. I don't know that a president can do anything. I know it's a spiritual battle. I understand we're in a matrix. I understand that a lot of what you see is sock puppets. I understand it's that really what it is is I'm not even here. You know, it's you going through your thing. And everything that you see is a projection of you. I understand that. And the same is true for me. There is no real you and me. There's just I am. There's just, it's right? So it's a, it's a total mystery. You can't get your mind around that, can you? It's so, so insane. But it's true. That's really more what the matrix is, you know. And then the pyramids are used to tether the souls to the earth. And 
I know that's bizarre, but I was shown that, you know, a long, long time ago. I did artwork to that, to that extent, to, sh to try to show that. There's a reason the souls are tethered. The word is tethered here. And what we want through Jesus Christ is to get out of here. That's what the kings of Egypt wanted. That's what the Tibetan Book of the Dead is about. That's what the Egyptian Book of the Dead of, is about. Is to undo that tethering because it makes you a slave. It makes you, you know, you have, you know, nine tenths of your vision of what you call reality that you used to know at one point or that you do know in some part of your being is shielded from you, just like you only use 10% of your brain, right? So it's, it's a tethering. It's, 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 it's like you're being harvested, you're being raised, you know, as cattle and to be harvested at a later date. And it's just really, un, it's unfair, it's wrong. It should be ended. So salvation and the mystery of Christ and the mystery of this whole thing takes on a grander meaning when you incorporate a multi-dimensional, um, non-time space plane, uh, or non-time space aspect into this whole thing and try to factor that all in. And many people have done that and they've tried to do it visually and they've tried to look at it in a many number of ways. But the one thing I can tell you is that freedom comes from the spirit, not from the flesh. Freedom comes from, you know, the, 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 the acquisition of eternal life and the acknowledgement thereof of eternal life and the receipt thereof of eternal life. So there's confidence of eternal life and then an altering of your behavior now based on that receipt of eternal life because that then transcends the dimension that you're tethered in thus giving you uh, a, a freedom that is, well, quite frankly, they, they, they can't stand that. It's hated. The way you get rid of that freedom is to conform to society, to the world, to the, to the, to the situation here. And then you've, 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 you've uh, gotten rid of your freedom. You're, you're, they've given, they say you're free in the world, but you're barred from the spirit. You've been kicked out of... Uh, the kingdom of God, and you are no now. You are simply a carnal being that lives and dies with every meal, every urge, every every betrayal, and every pat on the back. And I'm sorry, it's just a. Um, it makes one feel quite dirty if that's all there is. That's all. It just makes you feel lousy and purposeless and dirty. So they take on purposes of politics and they take on purposes of one pursuit or another and they get all fervent about that and years go by and then they drop dead and they go, that was a good life. It was engaged. When in fact it was avoiding. If you know what I just said, you get on your knees right now to the Lord and say, thank you for saving me. I give you my life, Father. I'll give you everything. I know I've got to give you everything. I know I can't hold anything back or anything out because you're going to you're going to take it you're going to smash it and I don't want you to smash me lord just let me just give you everything So you go where he leads you you know and maybe to uh you know maybe you, you, you who knows where you'll go but I know one thing I I don't ever want to go back to that Twitter thing again I was there I've pretty darn good at it and and you know I mean I could get real good at it if I practice and went for like a month or two but I don't know if I could get out once I got in. Because, see, the fights are never resolved. You see, you're never quite done. You know, and then you want to get wittier and cleverer. And, you, you know, you, you want to uh, get respect eventually. You know what I mean? It just, it just builds into a, a complete um, psychosis. Twitter psychosis. But anyway, the Donald is there and he's swinging away on his Twitter thing. And when he's on social media, that's all he's on is on Twitter. That's, that's, where he, he, that's it. There's more about him than any other subject on Twitter uh, by a, a big margin, even after there's a feeling of the dust settling and the Donald going down in the ratings. Well, if he's truly chosen by God in the law, I mean, from what I've seen, he already has maybe fulfilled his purpose already. I just want to make sure I say that so that going forward we don't, you know, have expectations of things that may not be fulfilled. 
I don't know. Someone prophesied that God had chosen him to go all the way. I met someone online today that was very confident of his going all the way to the presidency and, and beyond and being, you know, good for this, something that would help the country. But I, with the with the people out there that I, I just don't know, you know, I've, I know, I just go, I, you know, the way I work, I just work the way I work. And I can just tell you that right now, yeah, he was chosen to unmask the hypocrites and to and just undo these parties of corruption. Because I think without that happening, we can't heal and we can't go forward. You saw what happened. You elected of, of the conservative caucuses, the conservative uh, Senate and Congress, and you saw what happened. Absolutely nothing. So the people are fed up. They've had it enough. They've, they don't realize, like you and I do, that they're under attack by globalist interests. They don't understand that they're their lives, they're in the crosshairs, you know, they want them to become extinct, you know, they don't, they don't, they're, they're focused on, you know, what's on TV. They don't think they're, um, you know, third class citizens yet, you know, ready for the Auschwitz. And, you know, and I'm not saying that's going to happen because you know how the Lord moves everything. He's moving everything. So that's all I got to say about that. I've seen some things I just don't even want to repeat here because I've, it just has to do with betrayal. Like I say, a guy like Mike Huckabee, I'd see him on his little hokey show and he'd have people on there. He plays bass and he's pretty good at it. And, you know, I like to think he's a fellow musician and he talks about Jesus and, you know, it almost feels like the Tom Petty song. He loves Jesus. And her daughter to now free, free fall. Is that what it is? I can't even go that high. Free, free fall. Free. Loves Jesus. And her something to. What is it? And her boyfriend to. Yeah. Isn't that kind of a sarcastic thing? Oh, she she's an American woman. She loves Jesus. Isn't that a put down? Isn't that putting Jesus down? Uh, oh, hell yes. Jesus is like a decoration on the wall. That's very disrespectful, Mr. Tom Petty. Because you're so petty. That's why your name is Tom Petty, because you're petty. All your songs are about petty little things. Oh, don't worry. You have plenty of fans, because they're all petty, too. <laughs> <laughs> little petty fans um, no no I, I mean you know as far as the world's concerned if I were in the world I'm sure I would like you know I, I used to like his music kind of you know very commercial but I was very much more progressive in my tastes but you know he was alright you know I liked it when he got psychedelic with that don't come around here no more song I, but then he never followed through with that so I don't know you know he's Made up. He's a multi-zillionaire living on Carbon Beach in Malibu, which is the most expensive part of Malibu. And um, so he's, you know, he's got what he wanted. He loves Jesus, like a doily on the wall, you know, like a, like a plastic Jesus on the, on the, on the, on the dashboard. And her boyfriend, too. <laughs> yeah, okay, I can really relate to that. Gosh, that's horrible. Love Satan. I won't say what I'm going to say. I, I could really go there, and I'm not going to go there. But I, when I go there, people complain. I go there. I go there, and then people complain. I'm like, yeah, I'm just showing you that I understand what's required of the basic person in this life who's on the satanic side, which is probably the majority. And, you know, and all you have to do is just Give it and give it out, and the world loves you and welcome. And let's see how you do in this Coney Island love affair. But see, that arrangement made me feel dirty too. All that made me feel dirty. You know, the Twitter thing made me feel dirty. I guess I'm just very, like a barometer, I'm very sensitive, and I can, if 
if I feel dirty, though, I'm, I'm accurate. You know, I'm, 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 I'm accurate. When the soul feels dirty, it's, it's feel inside. You know, it's your soul. If it feels dirty, it's dirty. And I want my pure heart back, you know, before my, my innocence was pretty much robbed and, you know, I kept going back into denial and, you know, acting more and more like a child because I think I just couldn't handle the satanic reality. So I just would regress back to uh, childhood, even though, um, you know, later teen and adult, by, through my adult life, I just wanted to be like Truman, you know. I just was trying to hold on to my soul, to my innocence, whatever, as a life raft because I was, I couldn't handle this horrifying world. You can't blame me for that. You can't jump on me for that. I mean, I know I was a fool, but I mean, you can't just, you know, blame me and, you know, and, and I understand all the destruction that that caused in my life and the hurt and the, and the pain and the suffering, but that was my true call. That's the way I really was, you know? I just, I think, you know, I'm not the only one either. You know, not everyone could be world world savvy. You know, and street smart. I just, I just couldn't go there. I just, everything becomes so impure and so jaded. I, I did, you know, and everything went so casual about, you know, sex and murder and stuff. It's just, I couldn't, I couldn't live in a thing like that. I, life had to be more precious to me. There had to be dreams and hopes. There had to be wonderings and 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 and, and feelings of awe and beauty and. If I held on to my childhood or I went back into my childhood in order or a delusion so that I could try to remain intact or if it was if it was part of a being a multiple personality, who knows what it was. But if that's what I did in response to this world, you can't blame me for that. You can't blame me for that. You can't hurt me for that. That's no crime against you. That's just called a, a, a child trying to survive. Now I'm wondering, now that I'm, you know, whole and healed and all that, how I'm ever going to get my pure heart back? Well, Jesus is our immaculate heart. I know, but I, I still don't feel, I mean, it's, how do I get it back? <laughs> well, you do it by calling good evil and evil good. And you do it by, you know, calling what you say makes you dirty now, making you clean. So if what makes you dirty now makes you clean, you see, you could do all the dirty things and get cleaner and cleaner and shinier and shinier, the more dirty things you do. And then it's win-win. But I just can't flip around that way. I just can't see it that way. I don't know how my mind would get to that. I'd have to be broken within and irrevocably so and then well what good would there be being alive anyway it wouldn't really be me who's living this life anymore it'd be somebody else in this vessel so how do you make it work out somebody out there how do you make it work out now, I'll tell you the answer in a minute but I would just say how do you make it work out anybody Scream, right? Well, that's, I understand that, all right. Scream. Well, yeah, scream. You make it out, you make it all right by just, by not making it all right. By letting it be broken, my friends. That's how you make it work out. By letting the Lord take it broken and wrecked. And then let him take you little by little into love. And then through that love that he gives us, we can radiate that out to others. And then that's our pure heart back. It's in motion. A pure heart is not a heart that's, that's in stasis. It's a heart that is in motion. And love is, in a, is a, not just emotion, it's motion. Not just emotion, but motion. Love is emotion. Right? It's like a, a stream you enter into, and as you're going down the stream, you're in motion, you're in gear. It's just like um, the path of Jesus. It's, it's, it is love, but it's motion. 
and in and, and in that you are healed in that motion that no one can see. Because no one can read what you are, but they'd have to stop you and put you under a microscope. They can't do that, so they cannot verify your healing or your wholeness. But it is a miracle. And um, just stay down and let it be broken. The world will come along and offer you a hand, but then, you know, that, that what they offer you is slavery. You know, in your, right, quid pro quo, in exchange for your devotion, I'll give you this, as long as you keep giving me that. And then maybe I want a little more later. You know, it's like the mafia. You know, they come around, they want, you know, insurance money, right? You, you, you're never, never free. You're never able to rest. You're always looking over your shoulder. You don't want that. Now, when you're free, you don't look over your shoulder. You just, ah, oh, I could just be here at this moment, and there's nothing wrong anywhere. So to recap this lovely podcast, and I mean that sincerely, it has been a lovely experience. Um, you know, talking about this Donald Trump thing and my foray into the political realm because God wanted something done there. I don't, I'm not sure what I contributed, but... I guess I contributed something as, well, they're all talking about his poll numbers and free fall and this and that, so I needed to qualify what I mean about uh, the Donald being chosen. If he does nothing else, ladies and gentlemen, if he does nothing else, okay, except what he's done and what maybe he will do in the short term here, as far as I'm concerned, that's, that's, that's a lot. You know, that's fulfilling, this chosen thing. Chosen, to me, does not mean going all the way to the White House at all. It's, there's a work being done here. He's being used, the bull in the china shop, to do it. But I think we tend to focus too much on heroes and falling from grace and rising poles and this and that. So, no, that's, we have to take that off the table. Suffice to say, we're seeing this phenomenon. I, I never thought it would last that, folks, I never thought it would last this long. Remember in the beginning when I started talking about I never thought it would last this long. Now, every day this goes on and he stands there, I've never seen... His, his campaign uh, advisor or whatever, his manager, he, he quit, you know. I, he probably quit. I don't think he was fired. I think Donald just... He's, he's just going to say stuff like that because that's just the way he is. But, you know, whatever the truth is on that, I think what happened is he couldn't take it anymore. He just couldn't take it anymore. And Donald was doing his own thing. He wasn't listening to the campaign manager. So he was doing his own thing. He wasn't, he's not listening to anybody. He's not being a professional politician. He's just doing his own thing, which is, and so I think the guy quit because he just couldn't handle it. It was just too much. I mean, after the blows that happened and the thing on Thursday and all that, I mean, and now here we are Sunday. And I don't think we fully... And then, there, the, then there's the bummed-out beam weapon on us now today. And, you know, and then I... I, I you know, and all this somehow has to do with saving the world from nuclear World War Three, tying in back... Remember Obama? Back to him? What's he been up to while all this has been happening? He's been up to no damn good, too. And this has all been a nice distraction. So... You know, it's 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 precarious, friends. It's we run a thread all the time, and maybe we always have been. But I mean, we need to feel a sense of security and a sense of a sense of wholeness and a sense of, you know, we need love. We need we need um, appreciation. We need respect. We need to respect others. We need to feel a sense of trust. And my God, there's so few. There's a lot more people that I don't trust now today. My pure heart's been broken again and again and again. When do I get that back? I don't know. So when people become worldly wise, whether they go with the world deal or not, they, they, they become, you know, their hearts are broken. The world gives you a movie to live in, and they say, don't stop believing. God gives you grace and peace. And, and says, you know, my, my, you know, I am sufficient for you. My love is sufficient for you. My provision is sufficient for you. Um, I truly love you. I truly provide for you. I truly care for you. And no one else really does. Not like he can. 
and then you wait on him, and then things happen, and you go, oh my God, you just did that. You look back on your life, and you go, how many times have you intervened, Lord? How many angels have you sent to protect me? It must have been a lot. I'm, I'm with you. Because I know when I see what these friends, how they stab each other in the back, a too, Brute, you know. Mm -hmm. Especially these Republicans. I, I, I don't put it past. Lindsey Graham, is, he might have 1%, not even, he's like half a percent in the polls calling for the removal of Donald Trump, who's in the lead by, by, you know, by 10 or 12 points. Lindsey Graham's not even on the radar. He has no right to say anything about anything. That's the point. But they all look down on him. It's just like the Tony Montana thing. You know, here's the bad guy. You're never going to see a bad guy like this again. We're all going to go to our prim and proper hypocrisy and let the same monster run things. No, I don't think so. They voted in earnest to put a Republican Congress and Senate in there, and they got stabbed in the back. And now they're coming back. They don't know what to do. So the Lord sends in the bull. Break it down, tear it up. So that's all I can say. I can't, you know, other people are reporting. They think he's going to go somehow all the way. I, I know I have a friend out in California that says... He's just like Reagan, only he's more, you know, street tough like, like New York. But he's the same kind of spirit as Ronald Reagan. I'm going, well, I... And they hated Reagan, too, you know, he told me. I still owe me a little faith. I, I don't think it's my purview to know whether he's going to be president or not, or not. But to tell you, I think the Lord's in this. I think it's bigger than Trump, too. I think it's got a lot to do with a lot of things going on that are just breaking you know, and I, it may be danger for us folks to, you know, stepping back from the political arena. But boy, it's been nice to have to have something, some some bull in a china shop, hasn't it? It's at least for me. It's been nice to see him even making that statement about blood coming out of her eyes. It just and he got in trouble for for insinuating that she was menstruating, so therefore she was she was she was mad because she was on her period, which that wouldn't even have been a bad thing to say, you know, when you think about it. It just shows how, because they say stuff like this. Megyn Kelly hears crap like this at Fox News every day behind the scenes. They're you know, what are you on the rag? Yeah, no. I mean, I'm sure it's you know. How, how awful these people are. How much a double standard. and How, how big a hypocrite do you want to be publicly? I mean, when you be ashamed? Not if your conscience is seared. Well, then you call yourself a Christian. Can't have your conscience seared and be a Christian at the same time. It doesn't equate. It doesn't compute. Conservative. Where do you think we got the rhinos from? They're all rhinos. That's the point I'm making. That they've all been unmasked. At the end of the day, when the when the political winds blow an ugly direction, Obama will choose the Muslims. They will choose the establishment, which includes Republicans and Democrats, progressives. You know the well bunnied the corporate fascist. You know you know the the club you're not in, <laughs> as George Carlin used to say, right? The club that you're, and you're not in it, he'd say. Yep, and you're, they're in a club, all right, and you're not in it. And when they want something, they got a way to get it done. When Clinton threatened he was going to get rid of Trump, how did we know that A2 Brute was going to be none other than Rupert Murdoch? What do you know about that? Isn't that funny, how the cookie crumbles? And with that, I hope you enjoyed my podcast. Um... Yeah, people here expect me to keep it up. They're friends with me now. Uh, honestly, I don't have the energy. I, I'd, I'd love to do it, but, you know, maybe if I, I was a lot younger and I didn't have, you know, a bucket list to get accomplished, I would probably jump in there and just be like a f carefree kid, you know. But my childhood was interrupted. I never had a childhood, you know. I, I had an early childhood, but, I mean, my teenage years and my, well, what would have been college years, I was... Uh, 
I did not have mobility at that time. You know, I spent a lot of years in uh, under the care of others because I was obviously uh, there was something wrong with me. But not there was. Uh, there's nothing wrong with unless you think there's something wrong with me now. There wasn't. Then this is just. This is how the establishment works. Yes, well, you understand how dangerous the world is, don't you? Mm-hmm. You know, we've, there's no guarantee for any of us, but I'm going to bid you shalom, and I'll see you next time.